Well, the latest article from Empire has dropped on Across the Spider-Verse. And not only have they given us a pretty awesome look at the Vulture battling Spider-Man 2099, but some very interesting insight into the upcoming story from screenwriter Christopher Miller. You guys should grab your flashlights because I think it's about ready to get dark. Well, we are officially in the final countdown to Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. The promotional campaigns have started and Empire Magazine just dropped their new article on the upcoming sequel. Now, we're going to break down this shot of the Vulture, as well as one of the things Christopher Miller said about the upcoming film, and why I think it should have fans pretty curious about what's going to happen. Now, let's just take a quick look at the picture first, because it's pretty simple, but looks great. Now, the new picture features Oscar Isaac's Miguel O'Hara, Spider-Man 2099, taking on Adrian Toon, the Vulture. Now, in classic Spider-Verse animation fashion, the styles on this are pretty unique and really do make me wonder how far they are pushing this upcoming sequel. We've gotten quite a few looks at Miguel O'Hara, and his look still does hold up in that particular stylized format. But I have to say, this look at Adrian Toomes, even in the muted brownish color, looks absolutely awesome. It's pretty clear to me they're not going to hesitate in mixing up animation styles in this upcoming movie, and this might be one of those reasons this film has taken so long to work out. Now, as many of you know, this is the second Spider-Verse film. And, while chatting with the magazine, the writer and producer of the film, Christopher Miller, actually is comparing this movie to the middle chapter of another pretty famous trilogy. This is what he had to say. People who have seen Across have told us it feels like the Empire Strikes Back of the Spider-Verse franchise. It shows you worlds you haven't seen, and it's an emotional story that ends in a place where you need to see the third one. So yeah, this is our Empire. Now, there's no better way to say it. the second chapter is going to be dark than to compare it with Empire. The Empire Strikes Back, for many Star Wars fans, still holds up as the best Star Wars film ever, and it is by far one of the darker films. I think in comparing it to the second movie, and what he said here where you need to see the third, this really does reflect on the ending of that sequel. The Empire Strikes Back left us with Luke losing his hand to Vader, as well as Han Solo being frozen in carbonite and shipped to Jabba the Hutt. I suspect this movie is going to end with some serious tragedy and cliffhangers. And quite honestly, if I think anybody will be a victim of that tragedy, I think it's going to be Gwen Stacy. Now, I think all of this will be tied into the love story that we know has been brewing for a while. Miles is obviously in love with Gwen. We knew that in the first film, and it's very evident in the upcoming trailers. I really do suspect Gwen will be plucked from his arms, maybe literally, right at the end of this film, leading us to the next step. More than likely, right after everybody's feelings are truly revealed. Now, we knew this was part one of a two-parter, so leaving us on a cliffhanger doesn't really surprise me that much, but comparing it to Empire Strikes Back does. Like I said, probably the most famous second dark chapter of a trilogy ever, and since it's still talked about by fans to this day, it obviously has stuck with us for a really long time. In order to deliver on that emotion, it means some pretty high stakes, so at the end of this film, I'm expecting some major tragedy. Where this leaves Miles, Gwen, or even Miguel at the end of the upcoming film, we're gonna have to wait and see.